welcome to the Neurosurgical Training and Innovation Center, Neuro Training Center. I'm going to show you what our uh, surgeon artists do here. They say there is a surgeon scientist model, but I think there is also a surgeon artist model that we need to follow in medicine. And uh, here are Michelangelo's. This is uh, uh, Dr. Valenzuela, Johan. Uh, Johan, how are you? Very fine. Tell us well, what are you doing here? Yes, I'm doing an endoscopic in the nasal approach go into the central skull base, so we can see the pituitary gland, and also we can see how the internal coronary artery is just there in the cavernous sinus. We also can see the, the optic nerve, both optic nerve right and left one. This is the chiasmus. And going more inferiorly, we can see in the posterior fossa how the basilar artery and also the brainstem is there you can see the basilar artery and the sixth nerve going into the, this is a good anatomy to know because in the clinical case we can have more detail about how we can reach all these complex structures. Right, so many tumors in this area. Yeah. Uh, Cordomas, scondosarcomas, cornophoneniomas, pituitary tumors of course that affect this and it's good to understand this anatomy. Thank you, Johan. You're welcome. Dr. Yoshioka, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Dr. Yoshioka is a, a senior resident from Japan, a neuroplastic surgeon, expert in facial uh, reconstruction and reanimation procedures, and he's investigating the anatomy of the facial nerve and the muscles of the face and how to reanimate that. So Dr. Yoshioka, explain us, please, what, what are you what are yeah, you working on? I'm just uh, working on the... Oh, can you see? Working on the muscle segment of the facial nerve here, you can see. So the facial nerve is uh, traveled very close to the inner ear and the middle ear and exits the uh, cytomastoid foramen. This is a first branch, uh, extracranial first branch, uh, posterior auricular nerve. Here you can see the other branches to the digastric muscle and cytohyoid muscle. And then uh, uh, this nerve distributes to the uh, facial expression muscles. Here you can see the very dense network around the parotid gland. I have removed the parotid gland and uh, there are more than 15 mimetic muscles and the innovation pattern is very different. So I'm following the all of the facial nerve branches to the peripheral region, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You can imagine why we call them Michelangelo's because the, the, the quality of these dissections is just spectacular. And Dr. Yoshioka, he trained with Professor Rotten before my time. Um, so it's, it's actually an honor uh, to have him here. And uh, it's special to have him here working with us. Um, here we can see this is a dissection by one of our uh, Michelangelo's that left it up a little bit ago, uh, Maximum Argentina. But you can see the detail of the dissection of that brain. Um, that's looking at the limbic circuit, the uh, area uh, of the limbic system uh, that control emotions and memory. And this is so intricate. And the degree of detail in this uh, dissection is just uh, unbelievable. And in 20 years of uh, anatomy, studying anatomy, I've never seen this quality of dissection. You can see this is really carving the brain as Michelangelo did with the marble and uh, you get to understand uh, probably the most complex uh, structure in the in the in our world, which is the brain, the human brain. Wonderful. So maybe we can see uh, uh, here uh, Jose, Dr. Chan, Jose, uh, come from El Salvador. Uh, Jose, how are you? I'm I'm doing really uh, great today. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to uh, now the recognizing a little bit of the anatomy of the structures of uh, the cavernous sinus, middle fossa, and practically uh, the central skull base that uh, uh, Dr. JFM always uh, talked with us. We did an uh, anterior petrosectomy over here, as you can see. So for me, it's very, uh, it's very useful to try to um, understand the three-dimensional relationship between the these different uh, vascular um, nervous structures uh, in my country el salvador is very practically we don't have this kind of opportunities of um, learning uh, and practice these complex 
uh, neurosurgical procedures before going to the patient. Uh, so for me, it's a very uh, good opportunity to have this. And yeah, we are trying to uh, do our best here. You can see here the uh, third nerve, fourth nerve, the practically the whole trigeminal nerve already dissected, the sixth nerve since uh, its cisternal uh, segment, and the relationship within the other vascular and the uh, neurological structures. That's wonderful. I, I, I can tell you, Dr. Chang, that you will see that this will have a tremendous benefit for you and your patients. Uh, that was my experience when I studied anatomy many years ago. And, uh, you know, maybe a week or two weeks ago, I did an operation just in this area, which is highly complex. And this type of dissection is what makes a difference and helps you uh, get good results on those complex operations. Thank you. So keep going. And here we have Dr. Moon. He comes from uh, South Korea. He's an experienced surgeon and he is an expert in transorbital approaches. And he's investigating this in detail. Dr. Moon, tell us uh, how are you and uh, how are things yeah. going? Yeah, good, thank you. So, so now I'm working on endoscopic transorbital approach. It's a kind of novel approach for uh, approaching to the skull base. Uh, and, uh, it's a kind of minimally invasive surgery. So you can see this uh, one, only one inch incision on the eyelid. Uh, you can go through the orbit and then you can approach to the temporal, the brain, the brain temporal loop, and uh, you know, immediately you can approach to the carbonate sinus, and you can see this trigeminal nerve here, and you can approach it in a very short distance and a very small incision. It's a kind of very innovative, uh, small, uh, small, minimally invasive approach. So we are. Not, I'm not working on this one. That's, that's wonderful. And you've seen uh, that he's approaching a deep area of the brain and the skull base through just a small incision in the eye, which is an innovative way of uh, getting to this area. You've seen same anatomical area exposed uh, through the nose uh, or uh, above the ear uh, or through the eye. And this is what we try to do here, find the best route, less invasive, most effective uh, way to treat our patients. And you see the work that we do here. Um, not only educates this phenomenal group of surgeons, but I believe educates a lot of the surgeons around the world because we share uh, the work that is done here uh, with, uh, with everybody. So everybody can, can learn and patients can benefit uh, all over the world. Thank you.